Hi, this is Kath with Pocket Sketching. What are we going to do this time? Way back out of the 1800s, a technique that has been dropped. It is wax. It's used as a resist. It takes no room. It's clean. It goes with you. You're going to love to see how this works, and I can't wait to have you come along. Come join me. Let's see something that goes way back in tradition today. Way back, way, way back in tradition. I studied with a couple of mentors, both watercolorists, and they told me about something people did in the 1800s, but they didn't do it. It's wax as a resist. Now, they both used their thumbnails to scratch, but I never saw them use a resist. What do people use nowadays? Most people use things like this. This is called frisket. It's in a bottle. You put it on with a brush, and it leaves hard edges, and then you have to take it off. You have to rub it off. It's hard getting it back off. These are all steps I don't want to be bothered with. But beyond that, am I going to be carrying this in my bag? No way. No, nothing this big, nothing this messy, nothing I have to do two steps on. Instead, doing a little research and being incredibly lucky, I was able to go to a John Singer Sargent show in Brooklyn, and I had heard that Sargent used wax, but I'd never seen it used. I also did a lot of research. Sargent used candle stubs. Here are mine, one for sharp edges and one for big areas. You're going to see them in a few minutes. Let me show you what it does. This is a sergeant. Remember, he was, he was a portrait painter in Europe, but when he came to the States, he did watercolors almost exclusively. And he did them fast, and he did them in the field. Uh, he actually brought his family members. This is his sister. They came on vacations with him. He paid for the vacation, but he also brought the costumes, and they had to pose for him. So, and he loved reclining figures. In this figure, these swirls in the dress, these are done with wax, and it gives you a resist. There's something else. <laughs> it's sort of a, <laughs> but wait, there's more. You don't take it off. It's archival. So once you put it on, it is a resist, and it stays forever. You don't have to rub it back off, peel it off, any other of these things. In the show that I saw in Brooklyn, this is where I saw extensive use of wax. And it's still there, and the paintings were done in the mid to late 1800s. Here's another one, and this will show you another step. And modern people have a different way of doing this. The wax is here. Now, you can get the same effect with dry brush. Dry brush is a lot of pigment, very little water, and a lot of practice to get control. This does not take control, and this is one I'm going to show you in a few minutes. This is done in steps. The light yellow was put on first. The blue wasn't there. Then the light yellow is waxed. Then you put on another color. Then you wax that, and you put on another color finally coming up with the blue. That's how you get all these filly edges. And doing the edges of trees against the sky is always a problem for people. Let me show you a few places where this works. And then we'll get on to actually doing it. That's the fun. It's the doing. The one behind me, OK, where's the wax in this? This is kind of fun. I'll point it out carefully. See that water edge? That's wax. That held this edge from that. See the shine on the bottle? That's wax. Shine over here, wax. Bottom of the glass, stem of the glass, wax. Area right there, same deal. It's a resist. Show you another one. In this, wax is over the buildings up here. Wax is on the water. It's a resist. It leaves shining light. Isn't that fun? And it would be very hard to do this otherwise here, and it's up in the, on the mountain, where there's lighter areas. 
You can use it any place there's shine. This one, and this is the one we're going to work from today, in the water and up in the mountains.